Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. This video today is going to be about stiff line gobies. I've seen online that a lot of people have questions about keeping these gobies. They're quite a unique fish and not many people keep them at the moment. I've been keeping these stiff line gobies for the past few years now and I've learned so much about them. So I thought it would be a really good idea to share some of my experiences in keeping these gobies. In this video I'm going to be giving you 5 tips you should know before you keep stiff line gobies. These tips aren't any in particular order so let's get started. My first tip is about water quality. In the wild these stiff line gobies can be found in hillstream environments. In these kind of environments the water turnover is continuous. This means there's no stagnant water which means ammonia and nitrates can't build up. The water quality in these hillstream environments are really good. The levels of nitrate and ammonia will pretty much be zero. This means that these gobies really do appreciate really clean water. So if you're able to achieve this kind of water quality in your home aquarium, it'll make the gobies really happy. By getting the water conditions just right, it'll make the gobies feel more comfortable in their setup. Then you'll start to see more interesting behaviour from them. You might see some breeding behaviour if you have females in the tank. And then you'll start to see the males show off their breeding colours. In their breeding colours they look totally different compared to their normal colours. It really is an amazing sight to see, so try and keep your water quality as good as you can. To keep your water quality nice and clean, water changes will be the main thing. A good routine would be to do a 25% water change once a week. These water changes will help to remove any ammonia and nitrate that builds up due to fish waste. Then when you add the fresh clean water back into your aquarium, it will help to dilute any remaining ammonia and nitrate in the water column. If you stick to this routine, the water quality in your aquarium should stay really good. And if the water quality is really good, the gobies will be really happy too. My next tip is about deworming these gobies. All Cyphalon gobies are wild caught. They can breed in fresh water, but when the eggs hatch they need salt water to survive. This makes raising the fry very difficult in the home aquarium. So this means any Cyphalon gobies you see in your local fish shops have come from the wild. These gobies have some scavenger characteristics. Most of the time they'll be scavenging for food off the bottom of the riverbed. This means when they're trying to find food to eat they may end up eating worms or parasites. Once the parasites or worms are inside the fish they'll start to steal nutrients from the fish. So you might see a goby eating a lot but all those nutrients are just going to waste. The parasites are stealing their nutrients away from the goby. These worms and parasites essentially starve the goby of nutrients and food. Over time you might notice your goby starting to get thinner and thinner. This is a classic symptom of internal parasites. Another sign of infection is seeing long stringy white poop from your goby. The white is almost translucent color is due to the fish not digesting any food. If left untreated the fish won't survive for very long. So the first thing you should do when you get new gobies is put them into a quarantine tank. This will stop the parasites from infecting any other fish in your aquarium. Then to get rid of the internal parasites you'll have to use an anti-internal parasite medication. In the past to treat my fish I've used Sierra Nematol and also the API General Cure 2. Both of these medications have worked really well for me and they're also really simple to use too. If you want to try them out for yourself I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys. Most of the time these medications involve you dosing the tank and then doing a massive water change afterwards. Then you repeat the dosage again followed by another water change later on. And then once the gobies have been treated you can re-add them to your main aquarium. If you do this your gobies will be a lot healthier and live longer. Stifflon gobies can live longer than 5 years so it's really useful to do this. This tip is something I wish I knew when I got my first Stifflon goby. And that tip is to have a lid on your aquarium. These Stifflon gobies are great climbers. These gobies are evolved to live in environments that have fast flying water. Underneath their body they have this special little muscle. This muscle helps the goby stick to almost any surface. This is a really good evolutionary feature as it stops the goby from getting washed away in the fast flying water. Also in the wild these gobies can use this muscle to climb really steep surfaces like waterfalls. This means escaping an open top aquarium is no challenge for them. When I brought my first Stifflon goby after about a day it went missing. Back when I first started keeping these gobies I didn't realise I could actually climb out the aquarium. So after looking all around the aquarium I still couldn't find the goby. It was only after doing a little bit of tidying up outside the aquarium I noticed there was a goby on the floor. This Stifflon goby managed to find its way out of the aquarium and onto the floor. So ever since this has happened I've added a lid to my aquariums. If you guys are interested in making a cheap and easy lid I made a video on how to do that. I'll leave a little card in the top corner of this video if you guys want to try it out. When you are looking for a lid or trying to make your own, make sure there's not many gaps in the lid. These gobies are really good escape artists and they'll find a way through even the smallest of holes. I noticed that it's mainly new gobies that try to escape from the aquarium. After about a day or two they'll start to settle down and stop trying to escape the aquarium. So I highly recommend having a lid on your aquarium if you're keeping stiff on gobies. This next tip is about filtration of flow. Like I mentioned before these gobies come from hillstream environments. The flow of water in these areas are really high. So when you are keeping stiff on gobies you want to try and mimic their natural habitat. By doing this they'll feel more settled in your aquarium. One way of doing this is by using a really powerful filter. The more powerful filter you use the more flow you're going to get. Something to look at when buying a filter is the flow rate. A good flow rate to try and aim for is 10 times the volume of your aquarium. For example my Stifflon aquarium has about 45 litres of water. So for example if I was looking for a filter for my Stifflon aquarium I'm trying to find a filter that has a flow rate of 450 litres per hour. This will really provide a good amount of flow for your Stifflon gobies. Another benefit of having a really powerful filtration system is that it can help to keep the water quality really good. The larger filter have more capacity for biological filtration to occur. 
Biological filtration is when friendly bacteria breaks down ammonia into less harmful compounds. So the more water that can get filtered and cleaned, the better the water quality will be for your stiff on gobies. If you don't want to go for the oversized filter, you could always try adding a power head too. These power heads are usually quite small, but they can provide a lot of flow too. You can get power heads that provide an extra 400 litres per hour of flow. This will give a good boost to your aquarium overall. The more flow that you can provide in your aquarium, the more oxygen the gobies can get. Since these gobies are from Hillsham environments, they do get a lot of oxygen in their water. The more oxygen you can provide in your water column, the happier the gobies will be. Overall, I think it's a really good idea just to spend a little bit extra money on an oversized filter. If you can't do that, you could always just get a power head instead. My last tip in this video is going to be the diet of your stiffline gobies. These gobies are all fork feeders. Their main diet will consist of grazing off algae and biofilm off rocks, but also they'll eat small microorganisms too. To keep them happy, it's best to keep them in an aquarium that's been established for a while. A more mature aquarium will tend to have more biofilm and algae built up around it. This will provide a really good source of food for your gobies. And it doesn't cost any money to grow algae, so it's a free source of food too. If you are a lucky fish keeper and you're struggling to grow some algae for your gobies, you can just leave the light on on your aquarium for a little bit longer. The longer photo period would help the algae grow a little bit more. However, I think it's a really good idea to keep the diet of your gobies varied. I like to feed my gobies a variety of food. My go-to foods for these gobies would either be rapashi soil and green or algae wafers. Rapashi soil and green is a really good algae substitute. My stiff on gobies go crazy for this stuff. In the background you can see my gobies going crazy over this rapashi soil and green. It's a really good food and I think the gobies are really enjoying it too. It's also very quick to make and it lasts a long time if you put it in the freezer too. Once or twice a week I'll drop a cube into the tank and just let the gobies go wild on it. Algae wafers are also a really good choice too. I've been using the Hikari branded algae wafers. It takes a little bit of time for them to get used to eating it but after a while they do just start going crazy for it like the rapashi. If it's your first time feeding your gobies some algae wafers I recommend only putting a little bit in. It takes a couple of feeds to get the gobies used to this food but after a while they instinctively go for it. Another food I like to supplement my gobies diet is to feed them frozen baby brine shrimp. When you feed the frozen baby brine shrimp it will scatter around the whole aquarium. Since the gobies do have some scavenger characteristics they'll go around the aquarium trying to find this food. It's also a really good source of protein so if they are looking a little bit skinny you can feed them a little bit of brine shrimp and they should start to fatten up a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video on me sharing my tips on how to keep stiff on gobies. They can be a little bit tricky to keep but doing your research before buying them always helps. Stiff on gobies are a really unique fish to keep. These fish really do have a lot of personality. They really do add something special to your aquarium. There's so many species available to buy so there's plenty of variety out there. I hope you guys learned something useful about keeping these gobies. All these tips have come from my experience of keeping these gobies over the past few years. So I'm hoping by sharing my experiences you guys can keep these gobies successfully too. If you guys have any tips on keeping these gobies leave a comment below. It would be great to share more information about these gobies everyone. And finally just before I go if you guys found this video useful please give the video a like. And if you want to see more videos from my channel please subscribe.